Let me start with a little story. There once was a criminal who had committed a crime. He was sent to the king for his punishment. The king told him he had a choice of two punishments. He could be hung by a rope or take what's behind the big, dark, mysterious iron door. The criminal quickly decided on the rope. On the day of his punishment, he turned to the king and asked, out of curiosity, what's behind that door? The king laughed and said, you know, it's funny. I offer everyone the same choice and nearly everyone picks the rope. So, said the criminal, tell me what's behind that door. Obviously, I can't tell anyone. The king paused and then answered, freedom. But it seems most people are so afraid of the unknown that they immediately take the rope. This may seem like an ancient story, but it couldn't be more relevant today. Many of our behaviors, decisions and actions are driven by fear, both on a personal and on a societal level. Were you one of those people stocking up toilet paper and canned food during the corona pandemic? How often did you already dream of quitting your job because your true passion is somewhere else, maybe starting your own business, and you ended up not doing it out of fear of failure and uncertainty? And many organizations see the rapid change that is happening and the uncertainty this causes as a threat and rather go for efficiency and preservation of old patterns than driving innovation and embracing the new. We will see many organizations fall in the years to come, not because they were not once brilliant, but because of a lack of action due to fear conditioning. The thing is, fear kills more dreams than failure ever will. It limits our possibilities. It makes you miss out on opportunities because you simply don't see them. And fear literally shrinks your brain and makes you less creative. Whenever there's a crisis or a challenge, you have two ways of looking at it. It's a mere matter of mindset. You can either be in a state of fear or you frame it as an opportunity and a possibility for growth. As a neuroscientist, I can tell you that being in a constant state of fear is detrimental when trying to cope with whatever is coming up. You all know this. When in fear, your heart beats faster, you sweat, and you definitely don't feel comfortable taking decisions. This is because in these situations, your evolutionary fight or flight mechanisms are activated in a brain region called the amygdala, also referred to as the lizard brain. And if this region is activated for extended times, it leads to anxiety, to mistrust, and inaction or bad decisions. But here is where it becomes really interesting. Fear can shrink the size of a key brain area that is critical for long-term memory, creativity and imagination, your hippocampus. And by shrinking your hippocampus, you not only get bad at dealing with the past and accessing your memory, but you also lose the ability to imagine the future. So fear is zaps our creativity, our ability to decide, and our sense for collective future creation. The problem with that is that we lose sight of the future. We won't change our behaviors, we do not create innovations, and for sure we are not able to solve the urgent challenges we are facing globally. So if fear is so bad, what else can we do? Today, I want to share the greatest antidote to fear with you. I will show you how you can turn fear around. The greatest antidote to fear is having a positive vision of the future. Positive narratives and stories that captivate you and others on both the cognitive and emotional level. Fear is something that is evolutionarily speaking very old. It secured our survival over thousands of years and was vital when facing saber-toothed tigers. But today, those kind of threats are rather uncommon. Fear-based behavior is shared amongst many animals, but what distinguishes us as humans is our ability to have visions of the future, to plan and to tell stories. Creating and sharing visions which are stories and narratives about things that don't even exist, 
was the basis for trust and collaboration building ever increasing communities and cultures around things like religions or nation states and even abstract concepts like laws and currencies. Visions allow us to collaborate, to change our behaviors and to work toward a common goal. A positive future vision that triggers your passion does exactly the opposite of fear. It stimulates the release of key neurotransmitters associated with good mood, with activity and with thrill. These neurotransmitters are the same substances that you encounter when you eat chocolate or when you are enjoying the growing number of likes on your recent LinkedIn post. So how shall we get started? It really comes down to a mindset shift from a mindset of scarcity, the fear of what you may lose, to a mindset of abundance, the appreciation and gratitude for what you have and the enthusiasm for what you could have. How do you do this? Maybe stop watching the daily news on television because there you are bombarded with negative narratives and dystopias feeding your fear center and conditioning you on a scarcity mindset. Instead, choose a mindset and life of possibility, not limitations. Science has shown that people with an abundance mindset see and use opportunities much better, live more happily and achieve more. Surround yourself with people of action and with an abundance mindset. Such a mindset is decreasing the activity of your lizard brain, your fear center, and hence opening you up to think creatively, to connect with others and to create. And this is where our biggest problem lies. We have a global vision crisis. If I ask anyone of you what our common goal as Earthlings is, here on this planet, I'm sure no one here could answer this really. And that is our problem. That is why we cannot really tackle the climate crisis, for instance. That very same lack of vision is also why companies struggle to transform or adapt to change. We are in urgent need of visions and stories we collectively believe in. Such visions and their underlying values have a huge transformative power. They align like-minded people around a common goal. And again, from neuroscience we know that such purpose unleashes enormous creative and transformative potential. And through this, true impact is possible. Suddenly, transformation starts to happen. Disruption starts to delight. Now you may ask yourself, are there any visions that have transformative power on a larger scale? Yes, there are. Three visions narratives for the 21st century that help us create a future we really want and that will future-proof humanity. Vision number one, imitating nature, learning from living systems. I do not know a single person who doesn't connect positive feelings walking through the woods or generally being out in nature. We all love documentaries like Planet Earth. So we have this innate affinity toward living systems. A sustainable world inspired by living systems is a very powerful vision. It can help us to abandon our fragile machine metaphor and our efficiency focus to instead establish the concept of resilience. Living systems can serve as a blueprint and inspiration for an effective and adaptable design of our processes, organizations and societies. Nature over the course of 3.8 billion years has developed success proven strategies to manage complexity, test and iterate, adapt to disruptive changes, solve problems successfully and build resilient and healthy systems. Taking inspiration from such strategies has been shown to be of huge transformative advantage. People and every single organization we have created are such living systems that try to maintain themselves, develop and change. This is nicely reflected even in the language we use to describe in economics today. It has adopted numerous biological terms like decentralized networks, self-organization, adaptation to change, resilience, learning organizations, business ecosystems, 
All that is biology talk. Therefore, living systems hold a huge visionary potential to shape and modify our systems by imitating nature. And this beautifully converges with the trends of a sharing and circular economy and responsible consumption. So by making living systems part of our future vision, we not only accelerate resilience, but also take serious climate action. So let's move to vision number two, reinventing humanity and building human collaboratives. This vision narrative regards the future vision of humans and their role in society. This is all about connecting impact, purposeful work and life fulfillment. It's really bizarre. Today, one of the main drivers for work is making a living, working in companies whose main drive is to make profit selling products that we mostly won't even need. And to afford these things we don't need, we work in a job we don't like. We spend the majority of our lifetime at a job that doesn't fulfill us in processes that burn us out. And when we finally reach retirement, we don't have the money or the health or both to live that dream that we saved for so long. What if work was a combination of passion, skill and impact? Something we truly loved. The Japanese have practiced this concept for centuries. Ikigai, the reason for being. It is the sweet spot where passion, skill and impact meet. Interestingly, the new work movement that grows bigger and bigger is very similar. Respectful, purpose-driven and self-directed work meets personal development and work-life blending. This converges with the trend of the gig economy where people engage in temporary collaborative projects. Maybe we shouldn't feel threatened by new technologies that can eliminate the need for human work, especially for repetitive tasks. We should rather embrace it as an opportunity for human growth and development. In the near future, we will have an abundance of one of our most valuable assets, time. And with time comes leisure, freedom and quality of life, which in turn increases happiness and creativity. For this, surely we need to redesign our economy and our education system. Countries like Finland are leading this already today. They replaced their outdated education system with a novel approach called phenomenal learning, which is mandatory across the entire country. A path to acquire 21st century skills and competencies through phenomenon based learning curricula. With a growth and collaboration mindset, and the inner urge to passionately contribute to society according to our skills, we could transform society and humanity at large and achieve both higher levels of collective prosperity and individual happiness and self-actualization. And that leads me to the third vision narrative, exponential technologies. This vision completes the previous two. It is about exploring emerging technologies to shape the future and solve the world's most urgent problems. Drones, for instance, that deliver blood in rural areas of Rwanda. The company there is called Zipline. Its vision is to secure vital on-demand delivery for the world. That is massive. It is transformative. They save thousands of lives through timely access to life-saving resources enabled by technology. And many of such emerging technologies like artificial intelligence, quantum computing, digital biology are converging and developing at an exponential pace. They can provide us an amazing tool set to solve humanity's biggest challenges. And they actually reinforce the previous two visions. That is because once an exponential technology has reached maturity, it dematerializes its physical counterparts. For example, barely any one of us buys CDs or DVDs today, but streams content. No need to produce plastic CDs any longer. Dematerialization helps us to save scarce resources and makes things abundant, which together with a sharing economy generates a huge impact. Dematerialization also allows us to move towards zero marginal costs. We demonetize entire business models. 
things become significantly cheaper or even free. Decentralized solar power, for instance, makes energy abundant. Spotify makes music incredibly cheap. MOOCs, massive open online courses, give free access to the world's top knowledge. All that reinforces value creation for people and ultimately democratizes access to everything. Within the next few decades, we'll encounter some of the greatest transitions of humankind. Already today, technological disruption is affecting every aspect of our lives, businesses, industries, societies. It even redefines what it means to be human. Only if we abandon fear and move to an abundance mindset, instead, we will be able to secure our survival as humanity. For this to happen, we need powerful visions that spark creativity and action. I have presented three visions today that allow us as individuals, organizations and humanity as a whole to move into a bright future with confidence. These three visions are imitating living systems, respecting the planetary boundaries and behaving like living systems in terms of constant adaptation, reinventing humanity, value creation for people by leveraging collaboration and trust. And third, exponential technologies, responsible use of emerging technologies to accelerate change and create human prosperity. Future doesn't just happen, it is created by each of you. Let us leave this talk with a radical reframing of our presence. Let us exchange fear with abundance. Don't let fear control your decisions. Do not allow fear to dictate your actions. Instead of being held captive by fear conditioning, let us embrace an abundance mindset. A mindset of possibilities framed by a positive narrative of a desired future. Let us then use this narrative to align our efforts to create a future in collaboration. Winston Churchill once said, fear is a reaction. Courage is a decision. Everything is possible if you decide so. And everything is possible if we blur the boundaries between humans, technology and the planet. So let us start a global transformation today. Thank you.